Hello, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today for another near death experience interview today with Lamo. I found this wonderful lady through a Facebook interaction with a mutual friend and discovered quite by accident that she's had one of the most profound near-death experiences. In her experience, she saw both the golden light and the white light, and she had a life review which brought her some profound insights as to how to best live this life while we are here. Today, she will be sharing her experience and we'll be discussing a little bit, and tomorrow we'll be finishing up with a Q&A, so don't forget to check back tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being with me today, Lamo. I am so honored and privilege to be able to speak with you and hear about your near-death experience. Would you like to start by just sharing your near-death experience story with us and any other experiences, anything else that you want to share? Okay, yeah. Oh, hi. And, you know, it really is wonderful to be on your fabulous show, um, which I love listening to all the other people. Um, yes, yeah, so when, when I was 21, which is um, a couple of years ago, about more than four decades ago, <laughs> um, I was in a hospital because I was having a, a awful miscarriage. Well, everyone knows these things are awful, but um, I I was in there overnight, and during the night I had been internally bleeding. Well, um, in the morning. The nurses didn't know any of this. I mean, it's a long time ago. I wasn't plugged into some beeping device or anything. And um, so in the morning, they came to get me and they were taking me for a, a checkup. And we had to go up a few stairs. And as, as I took, like, on my, I think it was like my second or third step, I suddenly felt myself just reeling backwards. And I hit. I was thinking, wow, I'm going to really hit my head, you know, because I'm going up and and it's one of those hospital floors, you know. <laughs> and um, but it didn't matter. I wasn't worried about it. And but I I I started to fall back. And as I did, I started to keep spinning backwards. And I was going backwards in space. And I was seeing all the stars and everything going around me. And I was so, wow. And so I got a grip of myself and I stopped spinning. And um, I was flying. I was going to say kind of flying, but I was actually flying. I was flying through space without any flapping or anything. I was just moving flying through space and um i could feel it all around me um just kind of this velvety beauty it was just amazing and um i could see all the stars i could see all the planets and i actually went through the rings of saturn and um i mean it didn't have a label on it saying oh this is Saturn. <laughs> I just thought I went, I was going through these rings and I thought that must be Saturn, the, the one with the rings. We all know that one. And I could see all the little dust particles in the rings and rocks. And um, I was like just marveling at it all. And I came, it was just on the edge. I went through the edge of one, one of the outer ring and um, I was like, wow, just totally, like, as I'm telling you, I'm right there. And I'm looking ahead and I can just see stars and the heavens and just forever and all, all other planets floating around, just being not, well, they're not floating, they're held, they're being held there. And um, I was kind of being held. And I was like, I remember, like, just going, oh wow! If if I could tell people on Earth that this is something that you can experience, no one would believe me. No one, no one's going to believe me. And um, and I was just marveling and kind of laughing my head off because it was just so incredible. 
and and I just and I also had this thought that you know oh we're so petty we're so petty on earth when we when we live in this incredible vastness of space and then um bada bing bada boom as some movie star said once in a movie <laughs> I I was snapped it was a kind of a snappy thing and I was suddenly on the ceiling in the hospital above my old body and um, I was looking at the body going oh wow that's just not who I am I'm not I have got nothing to do with that body that's just I don't know what I was thinking the whole time I was in it you know I was remembering how I just really thought oh this is me you know how we all do and um, actually it's not not you at all and uh, and then and I was watching the nurses and um, they were I don't know what they were doing because I was like freaked out because I didn't want to be there anymore and um, I mean I was just feeling so much excitement and I, oh, I was just so happy um, to be free of it all and um, the, one nurse was crying the other one was telling her to get the doctor and uh, they were trying to bring me back to life and she's going oh she's died she's died and I was like, yes, I don't have to be there anymore. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, I've got to get away from these people, you know. Oh, because um, what apparent, apparently I'd been, I'd, I'd almost bled to death overnight. And uh, they didn't know. And they ended up having to give me a massive blood transfusion the next day. So I, was, I was actually in the hospital a couple of days. Um, but yeah, and uh so I was like, I've got to get away because, and, and I was, I was yelling at them, don't, don't, don't touch the body, leave it alone because I'm not coming back. I don't want it anymore. I'm finished with it. I've done my thing, <laughs> and uh, they, they were like really in a bad way, <laughs> trying to get me back. And, um, and so I looked around and I saw a window was open just slightly, and um, I thought, oh, I wonder if I can get through there. I've got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. And I'll never forget the ceiling because it was one of those polystyrene ceilings made of square, uh, uh, rectangular shapes fitted together, uh, like with all the little holes in. And, and I was like, oh, God, I had to get out of there. And um, so anyway, I saw this window open and suddenly, bad of being, I was in what can only be described as golden light. And it was the most beautiful experience that I have ever, that one could ever imagine. Because it's alive, it's, it has all intelligence, it has all knowing, all wisdom, all understanding, all serenity, everything of beauty um, and purity and Oh, and and this light, and so I was there just suddenly in this, and I w I was just looking, just looking, and um, all the little um, golden, I can only describe them as golden molecules, because that's what it was like I was looking at when you, um, I, I often describe it as uh, when you look at the sun and then you squint your eyes up, and then you see all these sun, and the sun's on your eye, eyelid, and you see all these kind of fuzzy little golden darting around things. It's sort of like that, not, not exactly, but it's sort of like that. And you can see through it. You know, it wasn't just like a, I mean, it, I could see forever, forever in all directions, just everywhere. And I was just so exhilarated by this and um, like serenely, um, peaceful as well and I was it's just like my my heart was just expanding for the love of everything because that's what that golden light is just this pure love which is everywhere and I understood that it's actually everywhere all around us right here now in well in the physical 
it's everywhere all around us and it's inside us and um but we're so cut off in the world we don't realize how amazing we actually are made of love and held together by the love and um it's so uh the beauty of it destroys well it doesn't destroy anything it just supports everything and like there's no fear at all there's no shame no horror no suffering it's ended there's there is nothing else except this divine beautiful golden love and um this just breaks my heart to be in the world and see so much suffering knowing what we are capable of you know to that we can actually contact this love to help others and to also enhance our own lives in in the most wonderful and kindest way possible and you don't have to do anything to to get that you can just kind of realize it in your mind in your heart and um allow it allow it and have some faith that it's actually real love in the human terms is is um nothing absolutely nothing compared to the truth of love and um so anyway so i'm in this beautiful love and i'm understanding everything of um the history of my history of the history of everything and the future of everything and the big pre and all that all the past it's like the past is this channel going one way and the future is a channel going the other way but actually it's not like that it's like a big round thing you know and um but we think in linear like in terms of lines or channels but it's not really yeah time is like a channel but um experience all the experience of all realities um are all happening simultaneously in one kind of giant bubble kind of thing of love and um and like this love extends everywhere throughout all this universe and all beyond and this universe is only one universe so and this but this same love is everywhere and there are so many possible uh, realities so this is what i have come to understand from the uh, experience is that once you have physicality you forget everything <laughs> so we were kind of all walking around going oh i don't know i don't know let's go and get burgers and chips or whatever you know you know and um, and so we kind of live and we got to go to work and it's all set up so that we we're basically tortured by everything all the time and we're always trying to get everything done but that is only one way of being on in in the body it is actually possible and i've seen it it's possible to enhance your love so much that you transform reality and become more attuned to the divinity i mean i say divinity the all these words don't cover it because when we're talking about such vastness such powerful love names they just don't enter into it and um so i was there experiencing reality on so many levels all at the same time and i i got it in my mind and remembered that in one of the holy books i've read lots of holy books and one of them it said on niscient mind and that totally describes exactly what i was in because in this love there is all wisdom and understanding 
and um and i was part of that and the realization that we're all part of that and there's no difference and um of between any of us we just the same thing it's really hard because as we all know living in the world we all think we're separate and different and, but we're not we're actually all the same we're all made of love and um and these bodies they're really difficult to see through you know we get really hooked into them and um it's, it's a big deal having a, a human body because you know it's also very rare to have a human body it is a very blessed experience and uh, special because there are billions and trillions and zillions of beings that want to be born into reality. Let's say the queue is vast. And if you find yourself in a human body, it is amazing. Uh, you know, even an animal or even an insect, that, that's still a massive blessing even though they suffer too. And, uh, but yeah, they, like, I mean, there are countless beings trying to have existence who have not realized the truth. So we're all here because we don't realize the truth. And I'm, I know I'm still here because I still haven't really realized it myself. So I was in this golden light and it felt like I was in it forever. That I could remember having a body, but it just seemed like, oh, forever away, you know? And um, it didn't, it was completely irrelevant now. And I was just, I was just being at one with this golden present, this beauty. And um, experiencing in in myself all of creation, and realizing the oneness, the unity, the 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 just the wholesome loving kindness, and um, so I was kind of marveling. This is probably a good word. I was marveling at this wonderful, wondrous miraculous, timeless love. And, uh, and then I thought, I thought, oh, I wonder if I've got any kind of a body. And I put my arms out in front of me and there were rainbows. They were made of rainbows, rainbow lights. My whole body was just all rainbows. Like, oh, it was so beautiful. And I was kind of not glowing, but um, glowing sort of, does it but um it's sort of like seeing electricity in the air but in color if you can imagine electric electric colored lines so they're kind of vibrating and all bright colors and that was my body i was a complete rainbow being and uh, i was i was, oh, when i saw this i was just even more thrilled than ever. I mean, the whole thing is just too much love to describe. And I saw that everyone can do that, can, can actually um, experience their own rainbow essence, you know? So I was, I was kind of marveling at this, this, this um, new discovery. And then uh, I looked and over in the distance was this this shining, not shining, but this, this other presence of light. And so all this is golden light forever and ever. And then in the distance is this kind of white light. And it, it's just there and I can feel it. And it's even more full of love than the golden light. <laughs> I want to get to it. <laughs> and I, I'm like, well, I wonder if I can fly or swim. How do you get through this, you know, all this love? <laughs> and uh, I need a rainbow, you know. <laughs> and 
and I started to kind of try and move myself towards it. I got closer and closer. it was a long way away. I got, I, I made some uh, progress towards it and, uh, and I was so excited. I, I thought, I have found, or it has found me, because there's no idea if you find it anything or if the thing is finding you. And that goes into so many different aspects of our lives. <laughs> and then this great big voice came. I'm not kidding. The loudest voice you ever heard ever in the whole world spoke to me and said, it's not your time. You have to go back. And I was like in a big, deep voice that, you know, rang throughout the entire universe of golden love that I was in and uh, oh that made me go oh <laughs> and I went no 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 because I want to go to this light and the voice said no no you have to go back it's not your time oh my goody aunt I was so no I'm not going back there's nothing I don't want to go back this is the truth I'm in it you know I don't, I'm not leaving I'm not and all this stuff's going in through my mind. No, I need to stay. And the funniest thing happened um, that gave me such a brilliant um, video. I saw a video. It was a video of my son jumping, doing a bungee jump. Not that long ago. He's in his 40s. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. And, and they pushed him off. <laughs> and when he, yeah, and when he went off, he went like this to try and fly. <laughs> that was awful to watch, but I mean, it was funny as anything. And, <laughs> but that's how it was. I was like, no, no, I need to stay here. I'm, I'm home, you know. And oh, um, oh, it's, it's so hard to come back. And uh, I felt myself falling. At like the only way I can describe it, a thousand miles an hour falling a thousand miles down. So you so fast, such uh, I felt like I was going down the tube actually, although I didn't see anything. I just I literally saw just rushing and um, just literally rushing through goldenness. I was unbelievable and um and then um a kind of a bang and in, in behind my navel so say that's my belly button there there and um i felt like this claw like a big bear's claw went <laughs> and pulled me into the body and i woke up in my body and that i could i felt this and I, and I went, ow, because it really hurt. And there I was on the table with the nurses and the girl, one of them, young woman, like, because I was only 21. She was about my age. And she's wiping the tears out of her eyes. Oh, thank God you're back. And all that. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And then I passed out and I, I was gone for a couple of days in two who knows? I don't. I would love to remember that, but I don't. Um, so, um, so that's my experience in a nutshell. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me ever. I, you know, I mean, I'm a loving person, but I'm a grumpy old woman as well. You know, I mean, I'm. No, no, we can't. It's. How do you be perfect in this mm. world? It is terribly difficult, and. Um, but I, I suppose I am a grumpy old woman for two minutes and I get over stuff really quickly. Mm. And um, so that's, that's probably a really good thing. I don't, I don't hang on to, I, and I'm always forgiving everyone. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. I'm just, I've heard your story before, but I'm just spellbound sitting here listening to you describe it. Did, did you say, that you had a life review i think i remember you telling me you had a life review at some point i did 
because I'm old, I forget loads of things, you know, and, and probably each time I tell it, the story changes a little bit because I'll feel something, you know, I'll get too excited and, you know, and I jump all over the place, oh, whatever. <laughs> no, it was perfect. But, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's right. So uh, while I was in my rainbow body, which I was marveling at, yeah, so I was because I tell you why I get distracted, because the big voice thing, you know, that big voice, that's a real shocker when, when you to experience that, that vibration through you, you know, and it's just so loud. So I'm always thinking about that. That voice has always been around, like, throughout my life, you know. And I, like, sometimes I expected to say, don't be a naughty girl, you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Otherwise, we might drop you down to somewhere even worse than <laughs> No. So, yeah. It's, um, I, while I was in my rainbow body, I... It was amazing. I saw the, the movie of my life. Um, so I was in a, a kind of a double dimension experience. So I saw the movie of my life, but I was, and I was the starring person in it. And, um, but yet I was also completely detached from it. So I was here and it was there, but I was also there as well. It was, it was an amazing experience. And, um, I, and I saw every single moment of my life. Like, and felt every single thing and heard everything and smelt everything and just was affected emotionally by everything at, an, at a more um, vivid level than anything I ever actually felt in life. So it was like really accentuated. Is that the right? Um, I think, is that the right word? I'm losing my mind because I'm just so, um, I'm in the experience. <laughs> and, uh, you're, uh, oh, it, it's an incredible thing and a, a very, very sad thing too because, um, you know, I mean, we do things, we don't do everything right and we, we say awful things sometimes and or whatever we do. And, uh, I was so disgusted with myself for not being more uh, spiritually, well, I, I mean, I wouldn't use that terminology then anyway. No, I probably wouldn't even now. Um, but to be more self-developed and more self-control and more self-awareness um, of myself and others. And I was really, really, really disappointed to see how I behaved with some people and to know what I thought about some people. And um, like, and even people that were really mean to me, I was absolutely gutted that I thought mean things back about them. I was shocked at my behavior not being kind. It was so awful and the shame, the shame, the shame overtook me. I mean, I wasn't, you know, like a really bad person or anything. <laughs> I was actually quite a good kind of person, but uh, oh, wow, tell you what, if you do something really bad, it's gonna be even worse. You're gonna feel terrible, more, more awful than me. I felt absolutely dreadful about the, my behavior. And um, I mean, I felt dreadful that uh, I thought that I used to say that I really hated my stepfather because he used to hit me really hard, like punching and stuff. And, um, and I was really disgusted with myself. In fact, I shouldn't have even really said that about him. But um, the thing is, it's a good example 
that sort of thing. And um, of how you just think, oh, I hate these people. I've got to get away from them. Blah, blah, blah. I was disgusted that I wasn't just being loving and kind toward them, even though he was being such a meanie, you know. And uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's so hard women when we're back in the body. But when we're not, and we get to see it all, that, that's the most confronting thing that is awful, absolutely dreadful, to see one's own behavior. I'm sitting here going, oh dear, <laughs> you know, I've got another 40 years on that, <laughs> on those. <laughs> so, oh no, <laughs> I've really got to get this together before I kick the bucket this time. <laughs> you know, und talk about under pressure. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm doing what I can. Yeah. It's like, you, but you can't be goody gumdrops. You've still got to be, you know, you've got to be real. So, um, yeah, well, that was the other thing. So, lying to yourself and lying is, is you're lying to everything. So you can't lie to yourself. So if you feel angry and if you feel upset, I've got this brilliant technique, which I, I do it. So I feel the anger. I feel that upset. And, you know, I still cry about a lot of things every now and then because I've been through quite a lot of suffering. And um, so working on the forgiveness side of things is, is endless for me. Um, I'm always getting a grip of myself. And, and saying right you've got two minutes to be miserable or feel sorry for yourself or and then I go oh cry better hurry up because I've only got two minutes you know? and then I'm okay <laughs> yeah and Excuse I think me. I remember you saying when we talked last time that you wished you hadn't spent so much time feeling sorry for yourself even though you have had a really difficult life Oh, yeah, absolutely, because all the pain and suffering, I know this is not going to make sense, but it make, it is a blessing because it moves us inside and in our hearts, in our minds, it moves us to improve. Mm. And the more we improve, we still may suffer, of course, because we never know what's coming, but um, it's all about improving one's own awareness of one's own behavior. Mm. And don't, we, you know, we spend far too much time worrying about other people and what, what they're doing or, or say or, you know, any of that. We, what we, what's really important is what we do and what we say and what we think and um, how we uh, can get a grip. That's all we have to do. And, um, you know, I love the, the whole thing like, oh, well, I haven't got it. I've run out of patience, I'm so angry. Okay, so just extend your patience, <laughs> extend your kindness. When you think you can't be kind, extend your kindness. When you think you can't be loving, expand your loving to, you know, you don't have to go, right, oh, I need to buy that person a box of chocolates. Just send them loving thoughts. Mm. This is much more valuable and long-term <laughs> because it's like ripples. We're sending out waves. We're sending out frequencies um, like radio channels. That, that everyone is a little radio all by themselves. So what are you tuning into? You're sending out. So if you're tuning into um, a horror film on a Saturday night with loads of beer, da -da, so will millions of other people. You know, um, mm. if you're whatever you're tuning into affects everyone. And people go, oh, yeah, but it's only me. It doesn't matter. Well, it does. We're all responsible for each other on a bigger, grander scale than what, what we are currently, you know, what we're taught. We're not taught any of this. I don't know mm. why. I mean, when I, when I um, found myself outside of the body uh, on the ceiling 
in the hospital, um, <laughs> often flying through space, of course, but <laughs> you know, having my mind blown. And uh, I was so disappointed that those nurses did not know that I was there. The world is not taught that uh, you have abilities. You have a, the, within you, I don't know how it works, but you have the ability to hear and see so much more than what we currently do um, because there is so much more going on. The thing that, that is just so important for all of us is, is this wonderful, serene, golden presence mm. of love. And uh, so, and it created everything. And we're not in charge, you know. We're only in charge of ourselves as individuals. We're not in charge of anyone else. Other people don't have any rights over anyone. Mm. It's just the whole thing is all based on a, an illusion, a lie, because there's negative energy in physical world, such as Earth. And yeah, and when I was out, I could see Earth and it's like titchy, you know, it's so titchy, tiny. And uh, I was like, why does everyone make such a fuss about everything all the time? What is wrong with everyone? And I saw, oh, I saw how the people just walk around like in this, like, oh, here I am in the front room, walking down the road, in the shop, wherever I am, in a plane, doesn't matter. They're not opening their, they don't open, they, they're just closed going, this is it, this is it, here and here and now. Here and now is kind of it as well, but it, it, it's here and now in a very expanded way. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, how would you, what was, what's your advice for people if they want to become more expanded? How do they tune into that? Well, you know, it's the old saying, just be still, mm -hmm. you know, don't let your mind wander, get a grip, and pull it back, pull it back, pull everything back into your heart. And, and, you know, if you don't know what that means, just visualize your idea of your most beautiful heart. Because everyone's got their own personal relationship with the divine no matter what religion anyone or no religion or you know it doesn't matter you're still it's still an individual experience no matter what groups say it doesn't matter it's individual you you never go as a group into this beautiful realm of love you all go alone we all go alone and so um that's all. Um, I mean, for me, I just love, you know, just draw flowers and that's how I see the heart. Mm. There's like mm. a flower in it. It's either cringing and shrinking or it's expanding and blossoming. Mm. And so that's how I see it. And I just love to just make it golden because I was in the golden light. So I see it as a golden flower. and. Um, that's my own personal little idea. All you're doing is you're getting a grip on wandering mind and emotions and bringing it all back into the heart of love. The most important thing is like that we catch, we catch ourselves out when we start to judge or criticize or uh, feel wounded, you know, all of these things <laughs> that we, we go, oh, no, it's just one of those tricky things that I actually don't need because I'm in the love so the more that the more and more that I realize that I'm in the love the less I need to do mm, about all this all this chaos you know so the more still I can be all the time and the more loving and kind I can be to others and um, I don't have to be concerned so much about everything that's going on although I can be I can be involved and I can do what I can to help but I don't 
have to so you so when you do stuff you do it knowing this will help in your heart but you don't do it out of aggression or anger or hate you do it out from a place of love and so working and moving in the world from a place of love transforms everything because if you do something from hate or anger you actually make it worse because you're feeding negative energy that way you're actually giving it more strength and you don't want it to be stronger so you have to be loving